I don't want to hear your pitiful excuses. Well, I thought it was a steamy pile of garbage. I can't believe you don't see it. What are you, Helen Keller? Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Film Snobbery. I am your host, the film snob, Nick Baisley. Uh, we've got such a great show for you today. Uh, first off, I want to welcome my co-host, Mr. Jerry Cavallaro. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Nick. Hi, everyone else. Everyone. Um, and uh, we, we've got such a, a jam-packed show for you today. Uh, we are continuing. Uh, this is week three of First Glance Month here at Film Snobbery, where we are interviewing and profiling different filmmakers and, that have been uh, their films have been accepted this year as uh, official selections of the First Class Film Festival in LA, um, and which it looks like we may have a uh, shot in hell to actually get to, thanks to uh, some gener generous contributions by uh, uh, our new sponsor, Sony, and, uh, and also um, through other contributions that uh, you guys yourselves have given us. Uh, more on that in a little bit, but first, We've got, uh, we've got some great things in store for you. What we've got first is we have a, an interview with a gentleman by the name of Lior Chefez, or Hef Hefez, uh, who is the director of a movie called The Godmother, premiering over at the, uh, the First Glance Film Festival. And um, we are actually going to be talking to him in a moment. First, we're going to show you a trailer for The Godmother, so stick around, and we'll be right back. I've been in this business for over 30 years, and I've never left a couple with their marriage problems unsolved. It seems you guys have a communication problem. You hired this guy to kill me? It was out of love. Love? Cancel the appointment! Didn't you get the message? What? He didn't tell me. We're gonna have kids. <laughs> It was your mom's idea, having rubbed up. Your mother lives with you? Ah! We're very close. That was my mom. She was firing at me. Ah! And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Lior Efez. Hey Nick, what's up? Thanks for I, having me. I am having such a phenomenal day, and, uh, I, and it just it's getting better, because now I get to speak with you about The Godmother. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be a part of your show. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm really excited to have you on the show, and um, you, you, your, your, uh, your film is really interesting. I was watching the trailer for it, and I was kind of, um, I was kind of watching some other stuff. And there are a lot of people in that that uh, that film that I kind of tend to recognize uh, from either other movies or TV. How did you go about casting this movie with such wonderful actors and actresses? Um, yeah, casting the film was uh, quite a challenge, um, and we were casting for about a month and doing more and more auditions, and we felt that we haven't found. Uh, the right persons for the job. We saw so many times the actors, but uh, the roles are so specific. So our solution was uh, uh, we could not land on any casting director and we had to do everything, uh, do it yourself. So I found that the best way to cast people is to use friends that happen to be actors. Because um, friends that are actors, they've been in so many workshops and classes and uh, they know many, many actors and they can be really open who's the right uh, guy for you so uh, a fellow Israeli is an actor his name is Asaf Cohen uh, you might know him he's a regular in Entourage he plays Yair Marx this crazy dude uh, rich dude from Dubai you know who I'm talking about yeah yeah, yeah I do if you watch Entourage he's this uh, um, character Yair so he's a fellow Israeli and he introduced me to the actress Elizabeth Bond mm -hmm. and she was amazing and another friend of mine, he's actually a director, his name is uh, William Liu, and he knew Ron Yuan, that uh, he's the lead actor, he plays uh, Danny, and he's a very established actor, you might know him from Prison Break, and from uh, Fast and Furious, and Entourage as well, and he kind of uh, 
a martial arts guru for independent filmmakers in Los Angeles. You know, his house is always open to give advice. He's a very kind and warm person. And he just did the action directing for Black Dynamite, if you heard about this yeah, film. Yeah, we know Black Dynamite here, absolutely. Yeah, so Ron did the uh, action directing on that movie, and uh, he met with me. I asked his advice about, you know, action, and he read the script, and he said, uh, Leo, well, how about me in your lead role? And I said, that would be amazing. So he jumped along, and he got a big crew of um, stunt people and other people that are experts in action, and we had an amazing team of stunt doubles. Um, yes, 75% of our cast had doubles on set because it was so heavy on action. Well, that, that, I'm sure that made a little bit of your casting decisions easier, that one person kind of referred to another person, another person. What were some of the other challenges that you had in making um, uh, The Godmother? Um, I would say that every step along the way was uh, huge fun, but huge challenge as well. Uh, you know, starting with, uh, with the script, we had maybe 30 drafts. So script, I found that uh, the two things that you absolutely can't compromise on is uh, script and casting. So those two steps were very uh, time consuming and I really, I worked with uh, Ben Fast, he's a good friend, uh, that he wrote the script with me and um, we worked on it for about uh, four months maybe, many, many drafts. Shooting action was kind of challenging as well, uh, because it was the first time I'm doing an action film. So I learned a lot along the way. The editing process was challenging, sound, everything was challenging. <laughs> and, and, but uh, now, is, this, isn't your, uh, this isn't your first uh, uh, time behind the camera, is it? Yeah, I made uh, many, many shorts. I would say 15 or 20 shorts before this one. Wow. Now, what prompted you to make this a short instead of a feature? Was it a, a time or a budget issue, or was it just like, it, was it a story, like actually a, uh, a story decision? Uh, the Godmother is a USC uh, thesis film for the USC Film School. Mm -hmm. So, in order to make a thesis, they limit you making a short because the film can't handle, you know, the facilities that each student will go and do his own feature. It will be too much time in the editing bay and the sound rooms. And another thing is budget, because I think if you have a limited budget, you'll be able to get more bang for the buck if you spread it uh, on less minutes. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, um, all right. So, uh, you're going to be at the First Glance Film Festival. Um, after the First Glance Film Festival, where uh, will our audience be able to see The Godmother? Um, yeah, so first glance is amazing opportunity for us. I'm uh, super excited that uh, Bill Ostroff uh, chose our movie to be a part of the closing night ceremony. It's, it's a great festival. We're very excited to be part of it. A week later, we have another screening in Los Angeles, and then we have uh, we have actually upcoming uh, screening in um, in Texas. It's the Hill Country Film Festival in April. We have uh, Memphis on April 22nd. Uh, we have uh, another screening in, um, coming up in, uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, there are many places. If you go to thegodmothermovie.com, mm -hmm. we have all our screenings there listed, and it, I make sure that our team update the website. So we are all over the states, yeah. So thegodmothermovie.com. If I can spell it right, I'm actually I'm, I'm putting it right now in the chat to make sure that everyone in our audience can uh, go check it out. That's um, right. So you know you had some pretty well known actors, and, you know, in your in your film. Did you have to worry at all about SAG or any of the other unions while making the film? Um, and and uh, if so, did it do anything to your actual production budget? Uh, the fact that we were a USC thesis film, we were under the cover of the SAG waiver, which is an agreement between the USC Film School and SAG, which means that we can use SAG actors according to the SAG rules, you know, 12-hour days and uh, food and all these uh, rules, but we don't have to pay them or SAG, so that's a great benefit. But uh, for our audience, I know that many of our friends, they made uh, short projects outside school, and when they contacted the SAG offices, SAG were extremely helpful to uh, put them under some umbrella of, uh, they have something that it's not even a low budget, it's kind of a no budget rule that you can work with SAG actors and they will, 
they're very accommodating for super low budget filmmakers. That's good to know because a lot of fil um, filmmakers, as soon as they, I think one of the reasons why they shy away a lot from well-known actors or, or names in their films is because they feel that they're actually going to have so much pushback from, uh, from SAG. Um, I, I, and I, I guess that, you know, uh, from what I understand, um, you can make a movie and not have to pay a cent to a lot of these actors and actresses until you start making money. And then as soon as you start making money, then yes, some of the rules start applying and you have to give the money back. But, um, uh, and, and pay some money too, um, but uh, that's good to know though that you know you're able. They, they are willing to work with you, and I've heard that before from other people, and I find that to be um, a uh, very kind of heartwarming story <laughs> because uh, I think that a lot of filmmakers, like I said, are kind of afraid to to work with SAG, and and uh, it, it's good to know that they're not completely evil. <laughs> no, not, not at all. Uh, all my encounters with SAG were. Um, very positive, and I would recommend to call them, check the website. You mentioned this back-end deal that you get compensation after the, the movie made money. It's, it's, yeah, it's great options. Um, so do, do you actually have, I mean, kind of going, going along that same vein of thought, uh, do you have any advice for any independent filmmakers trying to cast known actors or actresses in their projects? I mean, are you, um, are you kind of... Uh, do you have any, any advice at all for them, you know, trying to, 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 to deal with SAG? Uh, anything um, that they should know when even just approaching, uh, you know, some, some more well-known or, or SAG actors or actresses, uh, you know, it, it, to get them interested in, in, in doing your film? Um, yeah, like everything in filmmaking, I would say the front door is not usually the best way to enter the building. So you should try the back door, a window, a chimney or the sewer. And that goes to contacting actors. So a good way to go about not contacting the actor directly, but find someone that know the actor personally, and he can introduce you to the actor. And um, that would be a good way to approach that. And you know, not uh, working with good actors doesn't really necessarily mean that there are famous actors. So if you have a local uh, company, theater company, or any local uh, acting classes, and there is a good actor, he will be great for your movie because if the story is great, you don't need to worry about having a, a big name on the screen. And big name means that he will have less time, he might have less patience. Mm -hmm. And actually, I would recommend working always with people that are uh, at the same eye level with you. Not necessarily mean that if you are not experienced, work with unexperienced people. I mean that uh, if you're excited about making a low budget movie, you should work with people that are excited about making a low-budget movie with you and rather than doing you a favor because then they will have less energy to, to put into it like you have. Uh, one of our, one of our uh, audience members, uh, Elaine, asks, uh, did you actually have any actors in mind when you wrote the script? Uh, or, and did you get everyone that you wanted to get for your project? Uh, on this particular um, project, no. Yeah, I didn't have any specific actors in mind because I thought it might uh, made me. Be, I, I didn't want to be biased in the casting mm -hmm. process because sometimes you imagine like a blonde girl, and then you have uh, an Asian girl or uh, African American actress walking into the audition. And if you imagine, like I said, okay, I worked on the script for four months, and I always imagined her blonde, and that might be a mistake because. The African American or the uh, Asian American actress might bring something much more interesting to the table, and your movie would be much more specific and less generic. Yeah, no, and, and that makes sense. I mean, uh, you, you putting your you're putting the story first and what's best for the story versus what is in your head, which is not, which is while it, that's your ideal, isn't necessarily um, what might be ideal for the screen and for the audience. So that's that's good. I mean, that's a sign of a good filmmaker. You know, one that's willing to, to compromise, just not necessarily compromise your overall artistic vision. So. Yeah, it's not necessarily compromise. It's uh, when you walk along the path, you might find all kind of diamonds on the floor that you didn't even thought they are there. So you should keep your keep open mindness. That works for me. What 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 kind of uh, led you? I mean, you're. You, uh, you're, you're, as you've mentioned before, you're Israeli, and um, you're, you're now in Hollywood. And what, what made you want to become a filmmaker? 
uh, for many, many years, I was on a path uh, actually to become a doctor. So for me, um, switching to filmmaking was kind of a, a 180 degree turn. I was volunteering in the ambulance service. My father is a, a physician and I was, uh, I was a combat medic uh, instructor in the army. And I even did pre-med for one year and I felt then that I wanted to do something creative. I want to do something creative, and I felt that I'm, I'm really bored in school, and it didn't didn't do it to me. And then I decided to switch, and I studied the uh, undergrad in graphic design. Mm -hmm. While I was uh, in under in um, graphic design in Jerusalem, uh, I found myself doing short films for everything. We had assignment to do a, to design a menu for a restaurant, and so I made a little movie that present dishes. So I had assignment to do a two page spread advertisement for something so i made a movie about jeeps to advertise them and then i made a short film for my thesis project while all my friends did uh, books design and websites and illustration for books and all the classic graphic design stuff i was just making movies and then i said okay if i'm i want to make movies all day i should go to film school and and uh now i have to ask the question as far as film school is concerned did you feel that you really got a lot out of film school, or did you feel that um, it was more so just a, uh, I, I don't want to use the word waste of time, but what I want to maybe say is that it was nothing that you probably couldn't have learned on your own. Um, was it more about the networking or learning the technical aspects of filmmaking and less the creative aspect of it? I know there's like a, a bunch of questions in there, but pick one and feel free to run with it. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's absolutely a terrific uh, subject. Uh, film school, no, yes or no? I think it's very personal. So for me personally, film school was amazing experience, and I'm 100% happy that I did that mm -hmm. uh, because um, you know you can decide. All right, I want to learn filmmaking, and I will just be on set all day, and you will learn a lot. But um, what I found is that film school allows you to commit to something for. It might be two, three, four years mm -hmm. that you say, okay, now I'm in grad school, so I better study and, you know, um, do the best I can on the projects. And you don't have a day job, you, you use your saving or student loans, and you commit yourself. Because if you keep your day job, and then you say at the same time, I'm going to switch to filmmaking, you're coming back home at 6 p.m. after a day job, and you just don't have the time or the energy to, to do the, the steps. So that's one aspect. You mentioned networking. I found amazing friends for life at, at the film school. Amazing people that I'm in touch with them on a daily basis. We we keep crewing on each other projects. We read each other scripts. We watch each other rough cuts. And I really feel it's something like you know in the 70s when George Lucas called his buddies. You know I'm not George Lucas by any means, but the 70s camaraderie of using your film school buddies to help you um, when you walk on scripts and shooting stuff. And, and don't worry about making the George Lucas comparison. Let's be honest, George Lucas was no George Lucas when he started out either. Um, you know, he, 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 uh, he caught a few breaks by, you know, uh, befriending, you know, people like Francis Ford Coppola and Steven Spielberg and stuff like that and getting, you know, his uh, student film, THX 1138, remade into a larger film. and. And then from there, it was, you know, American Graffiti and Star Wars, and, well, we all know that, how that turned out. So, um, that being said, um, we, so I, we only have time for, like, one final question. And that, that next final question is you said you had a couple, screening, a couple more screenings for The Godmother coming up. Are you working on any other projects? Yeah, right now I'm putting a lot of effort into writing uh, because all those uh, film festivals, and we have uh, quite success with The Godmother, we, are, we won two festivals, uh, best short, so um, I believe that the Godman is going to lead to uh, more and more people that I will meet and projects, so I'm putting more time into screenwriting. I'm working on two feature scripts. Uh, one is a zombie movie and the other is a children adventure. I'm super excited about both of them and uh, hopefully that will be the next thing on the way. Nice. I am a, a big fan of zombie movies, so you'll definitely have to keep me in the loop <laughs> as you're making that one. 
Um, that being said, uh, everyone, I, I want to, uh, well, Lior, first I want to thank you for, for coming on the show again and uh, informing my, uh, my audience um, as to uh, the different dealings you had with SAG and, and kind of your process and, and your casting decisions, all that. All that was just gold information, and I really appreciate you sharing with everyone. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. And uh, if you'll go to Facebook, the Godmother Movie Group, you can join as a fan and you will know about any future screenings coming to your neighborhood. There you go. So everyone, definitely check out, make sure you check out The Godmother, both at the First Glance Film Festival. Also go to www.thegodmothermovie.com. Follow uh, Lior in, on, uh, on, you know, uh, on Facebook, uh, in the, the Godmother Movie Group on Facebook. Um, Thank you again very much. I, I greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much, Nick. Thank and you. Glad. I hope to meet you in person in first glance. Well, that, 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 that's a perfect segue into my next discussion. Uh, so thank you very much. And uh, so uh, audience, everyone out there, um, we've got a lot of news that we want to talk about, uh, specifically relating to the First Glance Film Festival. Uh, we had a contest going on that uh, stipulated that if we reached $500 in donations by today, uh, that we would um, we would raffle off a prize to whoever donated twenty dollars or more to our Indiegogo project over at Indiegogo.com/fsinla. If you're not already there, you sh I'll give you another minute to make a contribution because we got about six hundred dollars worth of prizes we're giving out, um, and uh, I'm gonna go pull the uh, the name out of the hat, the electronic hat, in about a minute. And uh, for, the, for the person's win. Now, the prizes we have is you have a copy of Final Draft and a copy of Gorilla Pro that you'll uh, be able to win. Um, you know, really good software packages. Uh, obviously, everyone knows Final Draft from this show, especially because Final Draft is one of our sponsors. And Gorilla Pro is nicely and uh, donated to us from the First Class Film Festival themselves. Uh, also, having met our uh, $500 requirement for Tuesday, I believe. I didn't confirm it, so if I announce this, if I announce this and it doesn't happen, I'm totally gonna have to edit this out later. Uh, but um, uh, we, we uh, having met our $500 mark, that also means that we're getting an extra $300 from the First Glance Film Festival. That leaves us with less, or a little over, a little over $150 left to raise of our $1,000 goal. We need to raise that. <laughs> So I'm counting on you guys to go to Indiegogo.com slash FSNLA and uh, make sure that we uh, re-reach re our goal, which will allow us to go cover both the First Glance Film Festival uh, in LA and the Streamy Awards, which are all the same weekend, uh, April 9th to the 11th. Uh, why is this important to you? What's in it for me, right? That's, that's, that's what everyone thinks. What's in it for you is really good coverage of other independent filmmakers. Uh, some of them might even be your movie that we're covering if you're in the audience and you're gonna be at first glance. So uh, you're definitely gonna want that. The Streamy Awards, I cannot stress enough how you guys really start, need to start paying attention to the web series community because they are your competition and it's good to know your competition. So our coverage on that is gonna give you a heads up and a little bit of a leg up on what's going on in the next year of uh, web television because they're encroaching on your territory, people. So there are million dollar deals being made in web series. Um, and basically all the web series is a movie breaking up, broken up into parts. So send us there, we'll get the coverage for you, and we will, uh, we will be certain to uh, make sure that we do a thorough job. I want to thank the sponsor uh, that we did get for uh, the First Glance Film Festival. I want to thank uh, Sony, uh, Sony Creative Digital, and uh, Vegas, Sony Vegas Pro 9. Um, for, for sponsoring our trip um, a little bit. I'm very, very happy to have them and continue to have them on board. Uh, uh, special thanks to our, uh, our rep there, Steve Foldvari. Uh, nice guy, nice guy. I really appreciate all the help. Um, so, that being said, we've got some, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna check right now. Right now, I am going to see who the winner is. I think I know who it is, so if you guys haven't donated in the past minute or so, then uh, let's see, Indiegogo.com, and uh, let's, let's, let's do this, MS in LA, all right, 
and we have raised a grand total thus far of $545. Uh, $500 of that, yes, have, having been from one of our sponsors. Uh, another $300 is going up on the big board in a couple of minutes and, uh, from the First Glance Film Festival. We'll probably do it after the show. Uh, and let's see, from our funders that did contribute, I want to thank, uh, thank a couple of anonymous people. Um, you know who you are. I want to thank our uh, frequent guest and supporter, Rain Tenchi, for uh, uh, which Rainy Cat in the uh, in in the, the chat room. If you guys uh, don't know her, and uh, I want to thank uh, Nathan, who I believe, who's also by the way, Nathan has also contributed to Stuck Like Chuck too, Jerry. And so did Rainy Cat. Yeah. So thank you to both of them. Yes, we gotta give so. them hands. We're gonna give them big hands. Yes. People behind the desk, give them hands. Yes. Okay. That helped. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, so, uh, you know what? And, and uh, I'm looking at right here. And you know what? Nathan. Nathan, you're the winner. So there. That's, it has been said, so it shall be done. Now, just because he won this particular prize doesn't necessarily mean that, uh, you know, we don't still need help. And we would appreciate any more help that you guys could possibly give. So, um, that being said, uh, we need to segue into our uh, we well, well let's let's actually start uh, talking about Jerry. Let's let's talk for a quick second about uh, what's going on with um, stuck like Chuck because you had a, an Indiegogo thing uh, message that you're putting out there uh, relating to one of your perks. Yeah. Uh which yeah. perk are you talking about? Well, uh, you had uh, your what your first yeah, perk. Quite a had, few. <laughs> your first perk had to do with the um, your uh, your your the soundtrack to your movie, and yeah, you just released something in regards to that, didn't you? Yeah, uh, I'm trying to I lead you into it without giving you away to the audience. Video. So what is it again? Sorry, start from the beginning. I I just released a music video for the band Raining and Okay. I created it using. You know, cut footage as well as footage from stuff like Chuck, and uh, it just the song inspired me. The song's actually not in the film. Another one of the band's songs is in the film, but th this song just fit the full movie perfectly. So I made this little video. I'll put it up. I'll uh, put a link in the chat. And we're working uh, on all, getting all the bands together to offer a free download of the soundtrack w for anyone who donates fifty dollars or more, as well as the DVD and everything else. Okay. So here's the music video in the chat. Uh, after the show, of course, watch it and let me know what you think. Absolutely. Also, Please. the sorry. Go ahead. Whoa. Go ahead, Jerry. Uh, well, the band actually also released a free download of this song as well as the full EP that it's on. So if you go on the music video, you can also get a link to that, so you can download the song if you like it. Download. Ring and okay. Download. It's good stuff. Well, there you go, and, uh, and and Jerry. By the way, how's how's your Indiegogo campaign doing? We just want to we want to uh, chat about that real quick. Well, honestly, there's been a bit of a lull recently. Uh, everyone's been experiencing it, so for some reason there's a, a lack of charity going on. Um, but uh, we're gonna push through it, and we already raised seven hundred and fifty-seven dollars. So nice. really happy with that. We're on our way to the thirty thousand dollar goal, and uh, we have a ton of perks, and we I have some new ideas for for pushing it. So. Uh, I think it's going to go well. Looking forward to finding out what we have next week when I give another update. <laughs> awesome. Well, we look forward to uh, that update, Jerry. And, uh, and, and if you guys uh, are looking out there to start a new project of your own, any other filmmakers and stuff, and I actually know a lot of you filmmakers that are in our audience already have projects made up, I, I can definitely highly recommend Indiegogo and, uh, and definitely uh, recommend um, throwing a project up there, they're, they're, uh, they're very nice people. So, that being said, um, I've got some other great news as well that I want to share with everybody. I want to share, uh, I want to share um, uh, some uh, news I got today. Uh, this is specifically relevant to you folks that are actually out in New York City. Um, in, uh, the next weekend on the 27th, um, I am going to be at the conversation in New York City at Columbia. And I'm going to be speaking there uh, with uh, a lot of people that um, have been on the show. Uh, I believe Lance Weiler is going to be there. Aaron Crumley is going to be there. I believe our friend Sherry Candler might be there. Um, I don't know if John Reese is going to be there, but um, uh, th this is going to be uh, a whole bunch of people. Um, Ira Deutschman is going to be there. Bob Hawk is going to be there. If you guys don't know who Bob Hawk is, you don't belong in this chat room. 
Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, Bob Hawk is the guy who basically uh, discovered Clerks, uh, along with um, along with uh, I can't remember the other guy. who was the guy from uh, Miramax. The uh, oh, it's killing me now. Um, but there, it basically what it is is uh, the conversation is is a series of panels and discussions uh, about uh, different aspects of independent film, um, different groups. Uh, are, are you know about digital distribution and audience and social media reaching new audiences uh, there's a bunch of stuff I don't know if what I'm looking at here is indication of what last year's uh, conversation was but um, it's some really good stuff I mean you're gonna see uh, let's see Scott McCauley from filmmaker magazine is gonna be there uh, the president of next new networks is gonna be there for you web series people um, there, there's just a lot of stuff uh, tickets are, are, are going very fast I couldn't even get a press pass for a camera guy there that's how packed this thing is going to be. So um, go get your tickets. Um, if you're a friend of the speaker, I can. Uh, if you and you want to go, contact me directly, and I can get you a 10% discount on uh, on passes to get in. So um, and I'll make sure that I, I uh, get you to do that because I would love to see all of you there. And uh, so that being said, we've got um, we've got uh, no, the rest of the show to go for now. Let me just uh, check with the desk for something, guys. Over there, we got you got nothing, huh? Nah. All right. Well, I'm, well, let's... we can talk about my idea for while you're having the conversation because you know, hundred dollars a ticket's kind of expensive, and I think it's more when it's actually on the day if you if you don't pre-order your ticket. That's correct. So I'm thinking of hanging out outside of the building and holding the chat, and uh, <laughs> it'll be a cheap knockoff of the conversation where we can all just congregate outside the building and discuss filmmaking for free. Nothing wrong with that. So I might, I might work on that. I just, it's just I took off the, already for work for the week after for DIY days, so I don't know if I can make the conversation or my chat, but I'll try to set up the chat. The chat. I love how Jerry's got to just muscle in on everything. No. <laughs> Of Try course, to steal it'll, it'll my be audience. the slam I dance to their Sundance. First you take all their money over in your Indiegogo campaign, now you're <laughs> going to take them away from my speaking engagement. I appreciate yep. that, you son of a bitch. No, Actually, uh, it'll be more like the trauma dance to their Sundance. <laughs> trauma dance, I'm sorry, Nick. I, I was, I was so going to make a comment on that, I figured I'd let it go. Um, I know, you know, I we, know. While we're while we're waiting, we're we're I'll, I'll give the audience a little heads up of what we're stalling for. Is we have a second guest supposedly for today, and unfortunately uh, they haven't showed up yet. And uh, I would love to promote them. Love to promote their movie, uh, The Extraordinary Monday of Herman Brumby. We actually have their trailer, uh, but uh, they're not here to discuss anything after that. So I'm kind of stalling for time. Uh, that being said, we do have some other stuff we want to talk about. Jerry, uh, we actually you know while we're talking about. Um, we were talking about our Indiegogo projects and stuff like that. Um, some interesting things actually happened with Indiegogo over the past couple of days, and that was uh, they just acquired a company called Distriber. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, Jerry, what is Distriber? Uh, basically, it's a way to get your film onto digital distribution platforms without having to go through a company. So if you want to get your feature film on iTunes, Normally, you'd have to set up a back-end deal with a distribution company. They'll set up your film on iTunes, and then they get like 30% on top of iTunes, 30%. So you really lose a lot of the sales of your film. Instead, you pay a one-time fee, and then your film is on iTunes, and you get 100% of the proceeds. And then they also have uh, Amazon Video On Demand, and they just signed up with Netflix, and they're working on Hulu. Nice. Nice. So they, uh, so you know, in combining Indiegogo with Distriber, now you have the ability to finance your movie and distribute it. So you actually have the ability to really, uh, you know, ba you know, you have each end of the spectrum. You have your pre-production and you know, your get your money, and then you have your post-production aspect of the marketing and distribution. So um, that's that's another reason why uh, you know Indiegogo is uh, doing very well right now. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, when I go to the conversation in New York uh, next week, uh, Slava Rubin from Indiegogo will be there. So will Sheila Andrine from IndieFlix. So will uh, speaking of other um, in the, you know independent uh, distribution platforms, um, a lot of people are going to be there. Um, I highly recommend everyone check that out um, and keep an eye on Indiegogo because apparently they're doing some big stuff. Um, and uh, and actually, yeah. So, Jerry, um, 
what you've got you've got some other news. Are you able to talk about the news involving uh, our good friend at Troma? And inv involving the phone call that I didn't get yet, so I'm waiting. Hopefully, I'll get it sometime tomorrow. Uh, I don't know how much I can talk about that, so I might have to save that for another time. But I can announce that Lloyd Kaufman is coming back for Stuck Like Chuck 2. Nice. Uh, he's agreed to come back, and he actually loves the idea for his part. And uh, I'm looking forward to working with him again. He was really funny small little cameo for Stuck Like Chuck, and now I give him a bigger part for Stuck Like Chuck 2. He's really happy with that, so uh, I'm happy to announce he's back. And I'm also, I can't tell you who, but we do have another celebrity cameo that just agreed to be in Stuck Like Chuck 2. So we're on our way to building up a nice cast of some familiar faces, as well as some unknowns. Nice. So happy about that and hopefully the, the thing with uh, Lloyd works out and I can announce next week the big news of course I'll announce it on Twitter before then of but course. I can of announce it on the show whore. You, you're a whore <laughs> filthy of course hunter. I'm a press whore uh, I've learned from the best so let me uh, yeah so uh, if you haven't already uh, if you're not already following Jerry and his Twitter updates you can go and do that over at uh, twitter.com slash get stuck uh, follow, of course, you know his Indiegogo uh, campaign as it uh, continues, um, and uh, feel free to also check out uh, www.stucklikechuck.com for more information on his movie. So, see, there you go. I gave you a nice plug, even though you are a filthy, filthy human being. And I oh, hate wow, your thank you. That... Jerry, Jerry, I hate your face. You get angry when guests don't show up. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, it's just like we didn't plan on having to fill an extra half an hour of a show. So uh, that being said. Well, um, I could talk about that thing that I was brought up to you, and then you said, well, we're not talking about that. I don't even remember what the hell that was. <laughs> uh, involves so on paranormal activity. Yeah, but that was like, if we were going to talk about that, that, would be, that, that should have been something that was talked about like th two months ago. Yeah, but it was just announced. Ah, fine, I'll allow it. <laughs> well, no, there's the whole fight going on with Paranormal Activity 2. Uh, the director of Saw 7 wanted to direct uh, Paranormal Activity. He was booted from the project because uh, Lionsgate is holding him to this contract that he has to direct Saw 7. Mm -hmm. And he's been really furious about that. He recently posted uh, online that... Uh, he, uh, I have to direct yet another torture porn again, uh, and he's not happy. He said he loathed the Saw franchise. So you can kind of tell that's not going to be a good movie when the director says he loathes the movie before it's even made, and then talks about how he doesn't want to make it and how he wishes he could do another film. And this is just Lionsgate's play to not make the Paranormal Activity franchise for Halloween happen. And it's just, it's kind of interesting to see, like, how Lionsgate would rather have a director that hates the film and doesn't even want to be part of it direct the film. Hmm. And now Paranormal Activity 2 is still searching for the director. Uh, one might be announced tomorrow, the rumors are. But, uh, yeah, they're going to announce the director now, and the film is going to be hitting theaters early October. Oh, so that kind of shows you how messed up Hollywood is. If they're still searching for a director, but they're going to release the film, uh, release the film October. That, that's... Ridiculous. Um, well, one of the things I'm going to do for the audience now, because I feel it would be fair to do it for the uh, for the potential guests that we were going to have on, I want to actually show the clip from uh, the extraordinary Monday Monday of Herman Brumby. And uh, when we come back from that, we will um, we will uh, continue this charade of a show. No kidding. Uh, so uh, we'll see you in a minute. Herman Brumby was not a man who enjoyed Mondays. But this Monday would turn out to be very much unlike other Mondays. This is the extraordinary Monday of Herman Brumby.
Unlikely, but not impossible. Thank you, everyone, for sticking with us. That was the uh, trailer for The Extraordinary Monday of Herman Brumby. Uh, now, that, and uh, that was directed by Ari Levinson, who was supposed to be here tonight, but apparently couldn't make it for some reason or another. Oh, well, hopefully everything's okay on his end. Um, and uh, that being said, uh, yeah, we were just, Jerry and I were just discussing uh, whether or not we should talk about some of the other Indiegogo projects that are out there. And uh, I want to say no, because I think we plugged them too much. But you know what, um, Jerry, why don't, we, why don't we talk about a couple of our friends' projects? Okay, well, that's what I was talking, uh, trying to figure I out which, would, which so we should actually go. talk about. But I think one of them we should talk about is in the chat. We should talk about Cerise. Yeah, uh, John Tregonis, Tregonis and, and Marinelle, who are both in the chat. I think they're both in the chat tonight. Cerise, uh, John Tregonis, their project Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> uh, yes, they've, they've done a really good job about raising some cash. What, what are they up to right now, Jerry? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, like thirty-seven fifty, or maybe even more now. I know it was 37 something uh, earlier today. Uh, but they actually just started a new thing where they're trying. They want you to try to come up with a tagline for their film. Well, I see so, it right here that they've raised four thousand two hundred and thirty dollars wow. of their five thousand dollar goal. So they're like almost they raised there. They a guys. lot today, then. Yeah, they did really, really well. Congrats to congrats to Mr. John Tregonis and Marinelle. That's um, that's very very good. I'm really impressed and very happy for you guys. And do me a favor. Once you've raised all your money, then start sending people over to us. Um, yes, yeah, start sending them over to Stuck Like Chuck 2. Now, <laughs> now, now, what you need that's to do is That's what you meant by this. us, right, Nick? No, I didn't mean that at all. <laughs> but after all, you are in Stuck Like Chuck 2. There's another surprise cameo, people. I ruined it. Oh, that's such a surprise. I would have, I would have, uh, what, what do they call that when you, uh, uh, I would have, I would have film bombed your, your, your movie. You know how they have photo bombing? I would have film bombed your movie. Just walking right behind a freaking, right, right during a take and just facing right to the camera. Okay. I, I would fly to Florida to do that to your movie. Good, so that means you'll pay for the transportation then and hotel, so I don't have to worry about you in the budget. No, I... That's, that's more not. good news for the backers of Stuck Like <laughs> Oh, Jerry, you kidding me? You're paying me double. Uh, because, you know, I have to buy two seats for my extra one. So I have ass. to give you two slices of pizza? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, well, I just wanted to say, their, their new t uh, contest, which they're trying to get more people to uh, Cerise, which they obviously is working, uh, they want people to come up with a tagline for the film, so if you just go to Cerise on Indiegogo, you can watch the video for that. And my tagline was, Cerise, the new color of envy, which, if you know the, t the plot of their film, uh, hopefully I win the contest. <laughs> Just throwing that out there, but everyone should submit and check it out. Yes, everyone should su submit and check it out as well. Uh, I, I gotta tell you, that the, the videos that you put up for your Indiegogo projects do, do make a difference. I've had so many people that have even told me that they love your video, Jerry. Um, oh, wow, thank yeah. you. A lot of people seem to like that. I don't know. I, I didn't uh, think people would like it because I go shirtless. I will tell you right now that Slava Rubin, the co-founder of Indiegogo, told me he loves your film. Your, your, your pitch. That's awesome. I told uh, him, I told I, him I, that I your pitch video is better than Stuck Like Chuck. But I wasn't sure if it was... Your pitch video is better than Stuck Like Chuck. The whole movie. And uh, your lighting is wow, so much really better. Wow, that's really a good way to promote it, thanks. I gotta tell you, your lighting has such improved to your, in your pitch video from your original movie that I have no doubt in my mind that with $30,000, you could buy an actual lighting package. I used natural light again. Did you? Actually, that I filmed my pitch video on the set of Stuck Like Chuck. Uh, Just like everything was taken down. But <laughs> it's exactly where I filmed it with the exact same light. Actually, with less lights in the room. <laughs> well, somehow so, yeah. it looks better. The lighting. I removed the lights. That that makes it better. Apparently, I right know more shadow. Um, Light shadows. Yes, and if you do want to see some uh, a bit of shirtless Jerry, sexy shirtless Jerry, you can uh, go see his uh, his pitch video. It's uh, and he wears a lot of t-shirts. He's got this yes. fetish for t-shirts. 
That's so. just true. I always like to wear a lot of shirts. <laughs> you do wear a lot I'm of always, shirts. I, whenever you see me, even at the at our our first ever Film Snobbery Live tweet up, I, I wore a Stuck Like Chuck t-shirt. <laughs> I almost want to uh, get the screen grab for, of you shirtless and, uh, and put it up here on the show at some point. But we're not going to do that tonight. <laughs> But I do want to do that at some point because I think that is only fair to replace the uh, to get you back from the uh, for when you guys put up the. That uh, was not me. I wasn't you, but you laughed and you laughed hard. <laughs> I didn't even know until they sent me the pic after. I wasn't even watching it the screen during the show. Um, that being said, oh, <laughs> with all this Indiegogo talk going on, well, by the way, once we do reach our one thousand dollar goal, we are going to put up our original uh, back up our original uh, uh, Indiegogo project, um, where we are trying to reach five thousand uh, dollars. Again, remember that half of the five thousand dollars that we raise does actually go to an independent production. So keep that in mind, guys. Um, and uh, so there. And um, no, 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 not you, Ryan. No, you get no money. Yes, f me. You know what? But though. F your life. <laughs> um, so this was an odd show. This was an interesting show. This was a show that went nowhere quickly. I the show is still going, and I'd like to talk about another Indiegogo project okay. uh, by Wacky Chan, Solomon Grundy. I just want to throw a quick shout out to him as well. He's a 19-year-old student filmmaker. Mm -hmm. He's already raised almost $7,000 for his film. Uh, he just brought on a producer from the movie Revolutionary Road. Wow! Uh, is he's is producing the film? Now, so is this the one that, that's just is he the guy doing Solomon Grundy, Born on a Monday, or is this Wacky yes. Chan? Yes, the same. Okay. Uh, Matson Tomlin, I think I said his name correctly, and uh, he's Wacky Chan on mm -hmm. Twitter. And that one's oh, on uh, Kickstarter. He, his is on Kickstarter. Oh, yes, his is on Kickstarter. That's right. Yes. Maybe we shouldn't promote him. No, that's okay. As a matter of fact, at the conversation, I'll be uh, I'll actually finally get to meet one of the co-founders of, uh, or one of the founders. I don't know if it's two people or whatever. Uh, one of the founders of um, Kickstarter. One of the elusive founders. Uh, because, the you know, unfortunately for Kickstarter, it's a very, um, they're a very uh, corporate kind of set up and you don't really get access to a lot of their back-end people. So um, it would be great to talk with Yancey. So yeah, uh, but no, we can talk about Kickstarter. We're, we're, fairly, uh, we're fairly gender neutral here as far as, uh, as far as that kind of stuff goes. Which one's the boy and which one's the girl in terms of Indiegogo and Kickstarter? Uh, <laughs> I will say Indiegogo is definitely our bitch. We'll make that. We'll make that the girl. That you shouldn't say that because they did. watch the show and yes, they, they love do. us and we love them. We do love them. I love them so much that I like to give them tough love, like I give you. You're my bitch too. Kneel before snob. Maybe we should have ended the show before. <laughs> <laughs> such a such a. Depressing night. <laughs> Not kidding, uh, but no. I, I uh, we are actually going to be wrapping up in a couple of minutes. Um, I want to thank our guests that did show up. I want to thank uh, uh, Lior Hefez. Um, I really uh, do look forward to checking out. Uh, his movie, uh, The Godmother, looks really funny. Ha I actually have it here. I have not had an opportunity to check it out. I've just been horrendously busy. Uh, I want to thank everyone who showed up in the chat tonight. I want to thank uh, BJC. First, I want to thank uh, Mr. Aguilar, Elaine Aguilar. And I want to thank Marinell and John Tregonis. I want to thank Jerry. I want to thank uh, Sacred Flash, King is a Fink. Uh, I, 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 I want to thank everybody because I'm just in that kind of mood. I want to thank the people who showed up. I want to thank the people who didn't show up. I'm thanking everyone. I want to thank Broadcast Assassin for showing up, uh, uh, partially, kind of, around. Um, and hopefully I will see you guys at the conversation in New York City next week, next Saturday. And if I don't see you in the conversation in New York City next Saturday, guess what? April 9th the 11th, I'll be at the First Glance Film Festival in L.A. So if you miss me in New York, you'll see me in L.A. If you miss me there, I'll be in Massachusetts. And uh, after the show, I'll be up in my room crying. So I'll uh, talk to you guys soon. Have a great I'll just night. be in New York. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. Stuck like Chuck. Good night. Bye. Stuck like Chuck. <laughs>